who think love can laugh at sorrows as the fountain of youth with bright tomorrows hop aboard the carousel if you want to ring the bell think think love As Rip Van Winkle But if you think love Your eyes will twinkle Just a kiss can't get you high It's the only way to fly Think, think love Sweet world is sweeter by far for those who think love. Moonlight and moonbeams will fall. Think romance and you. the first time. Hello? Capital sorority, lovely, lonesome Karen Cross Wolf girl speaking. Oh. Report the third calling. Who? 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 Mm. Who is this, please? Dink Pruitt the third. Who? Dink Pruitt. Oh. Oh. It's Dane. Dink Pruitt. Dane Pruitt. Dane Pruitt. Who do you want to speak to, Dean? Sandy Palmer. Oh. Who? Oh. Sandy. Oh. Hello? Is Sandy? Yes, this is Sandy Palmer. Brace yourself, Miss Palmer. This is not a dream. The next voice you will hear will be that of Gardner Pruitt the third. Dingaling to his intimate. Come on, Kelly. Wow. Ah. Hi, Sandy Ding. Hey, listen, how about a nice little No. No what? No anything. I told you I can't see you again this week. Now, if you want a playmate for your awkward age, Ding Pruitt, I'm sure there are dozens of girls who'd be more than happy to fill the job. She's out of her tree. She's lost her fern. Sandy, honey, what is there about me that makes me so utterly resistible to you? Aside from the fact that you're irresponsible, incorrigible, intolerable, impossible, and insane, I can't think of a thing. Great, then why don't you go out with me tonight? Sandy, honey, I asked you a simple question. Well, don't just sit there. Answer it, stupid. Stupid? Oh, no, 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 not you, stupid. I mean him, stupid. Kelp! Sandy, I don't. I didn't. Pruitt residence. Sandy, I think you're lovely and intelligent and desirable. And opinionated, stubborn, mule-headed. Sandy? Sandy? It's your whole granddaddy calling from Santa Barbara. Not now. Give him the tape. Mr. Pruitt III is away on a field trip. This is a recording. You shouldn't feed snow jobs like that to your whole granddaddy. One snap of his golden fingers and we lose our gas machine. Forget him. He just wants to make sure I'm not behaving myself. Get out the Philly file. <clears throat> Eensy, meensy, meensy, mosey. Annabelle Mosey, slow-breaking curves, hobby judo. Next. Oh, wow, Olive Olsen. This olive only for martinis. Keep going. And Sandy Palmer needs hard sell. Keep trying. 
Yeah, you're so right. Fasten your seatbelt. Yeah. Hose over. <laughs> Some guys bring flowers. Hey, you. I'm sorry, old man. I'm running a bit late. Listen, you. I know, I know, irate citizen. Let's not bandy words. Let me have it. Goes with the job. You work for that pinhead? Yeah. Pinhead Pruitt the third. G O H of C. G O H of C. Grandfather owns half the campus. I don't care what he owned. <laughs> Pruitt residence. Yes, Mrs. Harkness. Dang it, you idiot. Get out of here. Not until you say we've got a date. I can. I'm coming for an exam. So we could cram together my Riviera. Ding, please. If anyone sees you up here. Yeah, you're right. Let's go into your room. Come my on. room, you idiot. Sure. The room. Mm. Too heavy for you. Oh, no, that's all right. I have. Uh, oh, no. Oh, oh, well, thank you. Oh, oh, oh it, it is heavy. Oh, yes, I've got it. Now, on the top. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, dear. Ding, Pruitt, get out of here. Not until we've got a date. All right. Eight o'clock? Eight o'clock. Good. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. How about a kiss to see what you No. Oh, Sandy. No. Sandy. No. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Gee, I'm, I'm sorry, old man. I'm running a bit late. Wait a minute, you. Oh, are you oh, okay? Oh, I'm all right. Well, what are you doing here this time of day? I'm trying to commit suicide. What is he around here? A running gag? Never mind him. How's Uncle Sid? He's the same as I am. He's worried about you. Do you ever try to pick up a telephone now and then and call me? I know how busy you are. Sid and I are your family. Can you understand that? The only reason we're bombing this coast is to be close to you. But you're so touchy about my coming to see you. You can, baby, anytime. At the apartment. Where you never are, but not at the club. That's right, not at the club. Just pick up a telephone. Uncle Woody, if a place is good enough for you to work in, it's good enough for me to visit. I'm Joey Palmer's daughter, remember? I grew up in places like the Silver Palms. Why all of a sudden you it's and Uncle Sid... It's a dive, and you're not a kid anymore. Why don't you try to realize that? I'm 19, and according to the laws of California, I can drive, get married, I could even have a baby. Don't you dare have a baby without a diploma. That's just a figure of speech. Uncle Woody, look, all I'm trying to say is I have two perfectly wonderful uncles. I'm proud of them both, and I just want to come and catch their act once in a while. I'll let you know when we're going to do a benefit. Meanwhile, I don't want you in that club. Sandy, this is the Silver Palms, and that is not Betsy Ross. I don't care if it's not Lady Godiva. Let's go. 
Okay. Face it, Woody, my fingers are numbered. All that's holding this act together is your talent and my band-aids. Didn't like the old days with you and me and Joey. Boy, she sure looks like him, doesn't she? Who? Sandy. Huh? Sandy? A couple of silver fizzes. One. I'll have a Pepsi. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. One Pepsi and one silver fizz. Um, I'll have to see your ID card. Oh, look, buddy, I'm an old customer here. How old? What's she doing here? Leave it. No argument. One silver piece. Just a minute. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Phony license. Wise guy. Grandfather buy this for you, too? I suppose you just leave quietly and don't embarrass your lady. The lady's already embarrassed. Please, mister, don't manhandle me. I'm only boy handling you, Pinhead. Now move it. You're running a bit late. You, you just wait till I'm 21. That's what we're all waiting for, sweetie. Oh, oh, Jim, don't do that. He kissed you. I know. He's my uncle. Your uncle? Now she tells me. How about Dingaling's hideaway? The no uncle's there. Your fabulous apartment. I've heard a lot about it. Soft lights, music to suffer by. Silver fizzy moonlight on the terrace. Two sleepy people alone on a cloud. Take me home. Right. My home. Hard sell. Keep trying. Uncle, what you did to Sandy. After all, those kids aren't any different than we were at their age. That's what I'm worried about. tonight, Sid, baby. Like every night, honey, pizza-zy. It's because of Mars and Venus. They're in conjunction. My horoscope says, um, congenial contacts and general support in business. If anyone's business ever needed support. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a distinct pleasure to introduce our next two entertainers. A distinct pleasure to get it over with. <laughs> well, here comes the musical magic of Woodbury and Hoyt. Don't let him drive you away, folks. Topaz will be right back after a short musical interlude. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Lively bus tonight, Sid. Perfect. And we'd like to start off tonight with some new treatments of some old evergreens. Now, we've got the music, and I'm sure you all know the words, so come on, everybody. Why are our hearts beating harder? Everybody. It's back to the farm. It's back to the farm. Where we'll see mother and father. Come on now. It's back 
to the farm. It's back to the farm. I think we're losing them. We never had them. Old cousin John, Uncle Mose, Annie Mae, they will all look the same and be so glad we came. We'll have those corn pones and ham from the larder. It's back to the farm. It's back to the farm. Hey. There now, wasn't that fun? What do we do now? doesn't hate our act. All we need is some new material. Gus doesn't hate our act nearly as much as the audience. Let's just save face and quit. Not till Sandy graduates. We're not going to keep dragging her from one college to another. Hi. Hi, honey. Hi, Tope. Gee, thanks. I think I'll duck. Okay. Don't go out too far. <laughs> that lifeguard's nothing but a baby. <laughs> this war. Having trouble? I wasn't. It's been a long time. We've never met. That's a long time, isn't it? My name is uh, Woodbury. Woody Woodbury. Radio. TV. Record. Motion pictures. Silver palms. I usually cross the street when I come to it. Can I help you with your back? No, you can't. But there is something you could do for me. I'd love to. Would you call me a policeman? There seems to be a man annoying me. Oh, let's see if I can find one. <laughs> see a cold breeze come up over there? Breeze? Mm. Hey. I'm just breezing along with the breeze. Oldie but goody. Might pizzazz the act up a little. Zoom, 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 zoom. Even with no strings, it hurts. <laughs> zoom, 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 zoom. Well, boys, who are you working for tomorrow? <laughs> We're working for you. You're reminiscent. While Topaz freshens up a butterflies, it gives me indescribable pleasure to introduce Woodbury and Hoyt in their farewell appearance. Uh, what do you got for snake bite? Let's go. Good luck. I can't stand closing nights. Contractually, this act runs ten minutes. We have nine and a half. We have nine and a half to go. As long as I'm going to be working on the truck later, who needs that? rock a -bye, baby. They strung a poor dad. They hung him at sunrise. It was all very sad. As he stood neath the tree, his head hanging low. He said, pass me the booze, boy. Nine minutes to go. <laughs> it's 
nice to have you people here tonight. All of you, believe me, it's nice to have all of you. Especially, I like to see you college kids. And that's your name, old pal. Don. And is this your date here on your right? Sure is. You been out with her before, Don? Oh, yes. Oh, good enough for a return bout then, huh? <laughs> Uh, the college couple walking down on the beach in the moonlight. And she turned to him. She says, you remind me of the ocean. He says, wild and restless. She says, now you make me sick. <laughs> Those were the days. The kid got called into the dean's office. The dean said, young man, I understand that at 2 a.m. this morning you were drunk, intoxicated, wheeling a wheelbarrow around South Campus. He says, that's right, sir. The dean says, where was I at this time? Because you didn't do wheelbarrow, sir. <laughs> Better be good to your own relatives, Don. You got a brother? Hey, I'm not going to let you guys get away. Looks like I found a home. And this prop said to this little kid, you know, a little sophomore, he says, uh, you can't sleep in my class. Kid says, I could if you wouldn't talk so loud. But he's a riot. What sign is he born under? A lucky strike sign on 42nd Street. <laughs> Anybody that wants to buy a bass fiddle? So this couple are riding along in the car, and she said, would you like to see where I was vaccinated? He said, yeah, I'd like to see that. She said, well, keep driving. We're going to pass the hospital. <laughs> Mousy, bring me two drinks, Mouse, two drinks. Reminds me of the story about this kid said to his buddy, he says, have you ever been up before the dean? He says, I don't know. What time does he get up? <laughs> you know that pack I made about the farewell performance? You know, I was only half serious. Half serious? Yeah, you have. Or this cute little co-ed was on this cruise. She's out two days, and finally she walked up to the sailor. She says, I'm going to speak to the captain. So the sailor says, well, he's forward. She says, that's all right. It's a pleasure cruise. <laughs> Where you been hiding, Woody? You're Mouse. killing me. <laughs> There's my boy right there. He's good to his wife. He never goes home. <laughs> he's greatest story I've ever heard in my life. It's chemistry props up in front of his class. He said, students, this is your first practical experiment in simple chemistry. Well, you had this in your high school biology. It's nothing more than a repeat of that, a review of that. This tumbler contains H2O, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. Now, I'm going to drop a simple worm into this tumbler. Plink. See the way the worm lives and wriggles around and thrives and is happy? Isn't that wonderful? Now, look at that. Now, students, this tumbler contains alcohol. I'm going to drop an identical worm into this tumbler. Plunk. <gasps> See the way the worm shrivels up and dies? Now, what does that prove? There's always some smart alley kid in the back of the room who says, if you drink whiskey, you'll never have worms. <laughs> Search it up. It ain't what you drink. It's the way that you drink it. And I don't know your name, young lady. Hold that drink up. I've got a toast for you. Here's to the moments which are stolen, and stealing is certainly wrong. But after those moments are stolen, to whom do they really belong? Because <laughs> if your boyfriend doesn't come to claim them, or if my girl doesn't make a fuss, let's hold our heads up proudly, my love, and say they belong to us. Because if you had a bushel of apples, my dear, if you left them alone to rot, if a neighbor came by and ate them, would you blame him? Certainly not. <laughs> Because apples are made to be eaten, my sweet, and moments are made for delight. And that's who will tell our conscience if your boyfriend there passes out tonight. <laughs> and we get the cutest college students here. I would guess, sir, that you were in college about the time the Santa Fe was a wagon track. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Harry. Harry. Yeah, Harry. I, I was named after my father's chest. <laughs> Harry, if you, get any, if you get any more material, Harry, put it into a suit, will you? Is this your bride on your left, Harry, in the yeah. old summer cotton wash and wear dress? Sir? <laughs> What's her name, sir? Jane. She's a delightful looking lady. Much nicer looking girl than you had in here last week, Harry. I'll tell you that right off the bat. <laughs> How long are you married to Jane, Harry? 45 years tonight. 45 years tonight? All in favor of Harry buying us all a drink on his 45th wedding anniversary, say aye. aye. They certainly love you in here, Harry. You're a delightful man, Harry. It's nice to have you here. Bless your heart. Now, ah, over here, I've noticed this couple at the bar, this little gal in the green dress. What's your name? Linda. Linda. That's Spanish for beautiful. Did you know that, Linda? Why, thank you. Is this your husband? 
I should say so. What's his first name? Um, Jim. <laughs> Took you a minute to recognize him, didn't it? <laughs> And what's your name right here in front of me? Little girl in the uh, blue dress. Uh, my name is Margaret. Margaret, you're an absolute doll. Mind if I call you Maggie? Well, I don't like that very much. <laughs> Ready, gang? When I count three, one, two, three. Hello, Maggie! <laughs> Where are you from, Margaret? I'm from Philadelphia. Philadelphia, wonderful. You're a very attractive girl. What brings you out to California? Well, I'm out with my roommate from college. And you're and with the other girl? I'm with the three other young friends. I see. Right? You've been out with them uh, like this many nights? Uh... Yes, we have. Hmm. You have a lot of fun going out to five of you like this every night? <laughs> Can't you visualize the conversation? Now, boy, we're going out tonight, and I'll tell you this. I don't care who meets who, by golly, we're sticking together. I don't care what any of you say. Don't forget what Mother said. Nobody gets lucky in this group. <laughs> but even though we kid you, Maggie, Margaret, it's all done in fun, because you're a very pretty girl. I love the way your nose turns up. <laughs> then back down, and then back up, and then back down. Very pretty girl. How you doing over here? Good, Harry. I'm glad to hear that. Everything in good shape? Good. You look like you're having a good time, and I think it's about... <laughs> right in the middle of my best number. <laughs> this guy came home a little tipsy. His wife says, what did he come home half-loaded for? He says, I ran out of money. <laughs> He says, where's the rest of your paycheck? He says, I bought something for the house. He said, wonderful. What did you buy? He says, a round of drinks. <laughs> said, your drink, it'll be the death of me. He says, I'll have a double. Sure, this is the way they make love in India? Mm hmm. Concentrate. It's mind over matter. We're searching, groping. Searching, groping. Our essences are merging. Merging. I have you in my arms. Holding you close. My lips are seeking yours. We kiss. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. You beast! Mm -hmm. oh, hey. Hey. What do you beast? Hey, what do you know? It works. Calling kelp. Calling kelp. K E L P. Come in, kelp. Uh, kelp here, Saeed. Hop on your magic carpet and fly over here. Say no more. Here comes your genie with a light brown beard. Oh, Kel, please don't go. Oh, I gotta go. It's part of my job. But uh, I... See you later. Oh. <laughs> what can I do for you before I leave, Sahib? Here, Saeed. Okay, take a good break, Farouk. Up, up, and away! <laughs> to the girl of my dreams. I'll drink to them, Your Majesty. To them? Solomon Pruitt III, struggling through college on a Cleopatra budget. The boy who really has everything made. Almost. What is this, run-down dingwick? What have I done? Nothing since the day you were born. Need help? Yell for kelp. Oh, no sad songs for kelp, please. Listen, I don't need him. He needs me to need him. I'm a status symbol, his spotlight. Even that beard was my idea. 
And what ideas do you have for me? Another feather on your pillow? Sandy, honey, you've got me all wrong. Before I met you, I was a one-man show performing for my grandfather. Give the kid anything he wants in the store, but don't let him take it home. So I shopped around a little. I found something that I want to hang on to. Ding-a-ling. Hi, doll. Thanks for the bathing suit, ding, honey. So sweet of you to remember my size. Sure, honey. <laughs> See you around. Sandy? Hey, Sandy? Hey, Sandy, wait a minute. Let me talk to you. Please, Sandy. Wait a minute. Surf's up! Surf's up!
Will you cool it, Sandy? There's nothing between me and that girl except the bathing suit. Exactly the impression that I got. I tell you, I can't even remember her name. I haven't seen Maggie in weeks. Ding, I couldn't care less. What you do and who you do it with is your own business. Couldn't we make it our business? My business is getting an education. Well, honey, isn't this part of getting an education? Not the kind you've got in mind. Look, Ding, a couple of really swell people are making a lot of sacrifices to keep me in college. I'm after a Bachelor of Arts, not a Bachelor of Bikinis. Yeah, you're right. Couldn't we discuss this whole thing in my apartment? And what do I get? A bathing suit? Well, you forget that. That was her going away present. <laughs> and you've just had yours. Hey, hey, Sandy! Sandy, hey! hey. Serious. Laura, your son has been going out with this Palmer girl eight days a week. You've never objected to girls before. And I don't now. Experience with the opposite sex is an important part of a young man's education. Wild oats, I don't mind, but not one oat. Oh, now calm yourself, Father. I'm certain if Gardner finds her attractive, she must be a very nice young lady. Nice young lady. <laughs> a cheap little orphan finale hopper raised by a couple of broken down vaudevillians. Laura. Nice young girls don't go out with my grandson. But by Jeffrey, when he marries, it will be to a girl of good breeding. Someone who will help to stamp out the bad blood in this family. Must you continually bring that up? It's in his genes, Laura. I will not let this family be destroyed by a couple of heredity factors. You will try to handle it uh, delicately. Of course, dear. If Gardner should phone, not a word about my coming down there. Oh, oh, Father, uh, if I should have to get in touch with you, which car shall I call? Car 54. A Grammy Nut ice cream cone. Come on, Weezy. Come on, Weezy, you can do it. You gotta, Weezy. We're counting on you. Here, have some water, Weezy. We're just going to warn you. You're the child. Yeah, but one more. Come on. Easy boy, you can do it. You've got to bring the pennant back to Ocean Crest. Yeah! Open up, Weezy. <laughs> Here comes the mama bird. Go, Weezy, 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 go. Kelp, don't you feel a little crowded? But this is togetherness, which starts with P and rhymes with P and stands for poo, you fool. And I love you. And why don't you buy me one of my own? What's the matter with you? You want to come between us? So you pearled in a 15-footer, huh? What were you thinking of? You and that broken date. The least you can do, Ding Gardner Pruitt III. He signed my cast. Oh, sure, honey. Pistachio chocolate pineapple and grimy nut <laughs> Never mind the third. Oh, sure. A double Grammy nut cone, please. Hey, do you mind if I borrow your pegs? But, but, what for? Don't go away. Two for Rocky Road and two for Pineapple. Hi, Sandy. Did you get my roses? They're still yours. I sent them back, the whole five dozen. What happened to you? Oh, nothing. I, uh, I pearled in a 15-footer. Oh, what were you thinking of? I was thinking about you. Uh, can I, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Chalk Sunday with words, please. So tell me, am I still on your unfair list? Oh, Ding. If you only had more sense and less money. Well, you call the signals and I'll make any play. Is that a proposal? I love the car, but I think a guy is entitled to a demonstration. Tell me, you do feel something for me, don't you? Yes, I do. I'm not immune. I've caught the Pruitt infection. Then why don't we run a temperature together? 
We can't, Ding. You don't have it. You're just a carrier. Hey, Sandy. Sandy. Ding, will you please? A 15-footer? And you were thinking of me. But, uh, Sandy, you did it, Wheezy. It, it, it is not while beauty and youth are mine own, and the cheeks unprofaned by a tear. Cut, hold it. Just sing with the voice, baby. Just the voice. Come on now. <clears throat> and, and, and the cheeks unprofaned by a tear that the first topaz underplay underplay stanislavski my horoscope said i should put my best foot forward foot right <laughs> only the foot let's try it again <clears throat> it is not well beauty honey baby a topaz sweetie the days of the smoker are over. We are now catering to the poor little lambs who have lost their way. Bah, 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 honey. Easy on the Taurus and heavy on the Virgo. <clears throat> it, it is not while beauty and youth are thine own and the cheeks Unprofaned by a tear. Now you got it, honey. The Matchfield technique with a Marlon Brando approach. Hey, that's surfing. Oh, Arnold. Come on, dear. Can I help you? Uh, <clears throat> uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Woodbury, please. Woody, right over there at the bar. Thank you. The bar. Mr. Woodbury? Yeah? My name is Cronin, B.S. Cronin. I'd like to talk with you. About what? Your ward, Sandra Palmer. I'm Gardner Pruitt's grandfather. What about Sandy, Mr. Cronin? I understand the girl is an excellent student. How would you like to have her complete her education at one of our finer colleges? Smith, Vassar, Bryn Mawr, all expenses paid, of course. Oh? Kids getting a little too close for comfort? I have definite plans for Gardner's future, Mr. Woodbury. Your niece doesn't fit into any of them. I see. No free French poodles for the pedigreed Pruitts. Got to watch out for those back fence romances. Now listen, B.S. I'm not telling Sandy who to fall in love with or who not to fall in love with. And I'm not letting you do it either. Love? <laughs> What's she in love with? Twenty million dollars? No, but you are. Now, if you'll excuse me, you're running a bit late. Now, listen, punk. Woodbury, you just made the biggest mistake of your life. This was a nice club you had here. to acquaint us with the plans of the projected gymnasium, which will be constructed on the site adjacent to our splendid swimming pool, which is also a gift from our most generous benefactor, Mr. B.S. Cronin. Thank you, dear. To house and educate is only part of our job. We also have the responsibility of protecting our charges from the evil influences of those who would prey upon their youth and their innocence. I refer specifically to a low dive on the very borders of our campus, operated by a disgusting comedian whose name escapes me at the moment. Uh, Woody Woodbury. Thank you, Dr. Swenson. This Woodbury not only is making a mockery of respectability... But he is encouraging drinking, demoralizing vast numbers of our students and contributing immeasurably to the laxity and inefficiency of this college. Yes, and that too. Moreover, let us not forget that extra added attraction. That topaz. Oh, the way she... Oh, right down Claude, to... Claude, you've been there? 
<laughs> well, once, uh, twice, uh, out-of-town guests, you know. <laughs> I myself have actually witnessed her taking one of our boys into her dressing room. <gasps> That's intolerable. Just intolerable. I think our duty is plain. That den of iniquity must be ruled off limits to all students of this college. On what grounds, Doctor? We have no positive evidence of these claims. Ah, uh, true, true, true. Dean Watkins, you promised to use the evidence and I'll deliver it. Thank you, Dr. Swenson. Juice, please. Red light, boss. Faculty broom jockey. Babysitting at table 16. What's a lady's pleasure? Fruit juice all the way. Fruit juice? My specialty. I'll fix this one. Orange is fruit. Lemon is fruit. Lime is fruit. Potatoes is fruit. Apricot, good fruit. And of course, let us not forget the fruit of the barley. give his body to the college already pickled the top hot dogger at surf's up who is it Jose! Jose! Surf's up! Surf's up! here's to the lady and we spoil them in this country but you deserve it gals you do you realize this is the only nation in the world other than one other there's one other nation in the world where the woman walks ahead of the man, and that's Korea, on a kind of landmine. <laughs> Could I have another one, please? And it starts early in life. It 
start early in life, this little girl was dragging a chain, and her girlfriend says, why are you dragging She'll have chain? another. She said, do you ever try pushing one? The same. <laughs> No you should have written it down. Kids. And the mother called downstairs <laughs> later in life. She was upstairs. She called down. Where are you, Betty? She says, I'm down here with John in the loving room. The mother said, that's living. She said, and how, mother? <laughs> Everybody has a great sense of humor. Got to have. And people like to take a drink, as we always talk about. It's no sin. These two fellows were having a drink, and one turned to the other and said, my doctor cut me to one drink a day, and this little beauty here is for December the 26th, 1988. Thank you. Steppers, I got a compass on. I'm headed northwest. It's Woody Wheaton time. Ready, Tom? It's Woody Wing time, it's Woody Wing time. Hold it! These two cooks with lemonades promised to improve their grades. How'd you do in the last test, Scrabble? Like fabulous! <laughs> like how? Terrific! Scrabble? Well, pretty good. How good? <laughs> Lousy. <laughs> how about you, Scab? You know the situation. The teacher's still prejudiced. <laughs> Back. Bookworms, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Ready, gang? Tom? <laughs> it's Woody Wheaton time. It's Woody Wheaton time. Hold it! Look who we have here. Young doctors killed air. Casey Gillespie and young Dr. Malone. <laughs> you fellas doing any surgery in the morning? Well, we're doing a lobotomy on a guinea pig. Did I, Doc? <laughs> guinea pigs don't appreciate doctors with hangovers. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's Woody Wheaton time, it's Woody Wheaton time, it's Woody Wheaton time. Hold it. Let's look in on this young girl. I think she works for Milton Burrow. <laughs> See if you're getting the jokes down right here, beautiful. I'd uh, hate to be misquoted. I like you better in a bathing suit. <laughs> It's Woody Wing time, it's Woody Wing time. What's she on? Fruit juice. It's Woody Wing time, it's Woody Wing time, it's Woody Wing time, it's Woody Wing time, it's Woody Wing time. Where's Sid? Took his ulcer home to bed. Wants you to bring him a chicken sandwich. Night, Lou. Thanks. Good night. I'd like a few words with you, Woody Booberry. You may not know it, but it's Woody Wooden time. That's a chicken sandwich? Yeah, fried. Passed out? Gus spiked to fruit juice. He spotted her doing research for Pruitt's grandfather. Cronin's pressuring the college to close us. How do you know? She told me everything. She kept calling me Mama. Mama? Mama. I can't take her home in this condition. What are we going to do with the body? Bury her in the basement, maybe. It's too undignified. She's a faculty member. She's a full-fledged doctor of sociology. She is? Well, well, Woody, isn't this a little too uh, sociological? I'll worry about that in the morning. Go fix up a bed in the balcony. But, but Woody, she can't. You can't. She's a faculty member. I'm crying out loud, that's my problem. Beat it, will you, Sid? All right. Remember, you're her mama.
Uh, Dr. Swenson. Huh? Oh, good afternoon, Dean. Did uh, anything happen last night? Last night, why? Well, you saw him, didn't you? Who? Woodbury, surf's up. You were there, weren't you? Oh, there, yes, yes, I was there. Uh -huh. Well, what's your impression now? Uh, well, um, uh, I'm not quite ready to uh, express it yet. I missed a good deal of the show. I'm uh, going back there tonight. Well, get your report in as soon as possible. Mr. Cronin is very impatient. Uh, yes, Dean, of course. Yeah. Let's go look in on this girl. I think she works for Milton Burl. Woodbury. Yes, Dr. Swenson. Oh, and you know who I am? Well, we're pretty well acquainted. I ordered fruit juice. I'm sorry about that, Doctor. Gus is a throwback to the untouchable world. He figured you weren't exactly one of our fans. The reason I came here last night... ...was to hang a padlock on me in behalf of Mr. Cronin. I represent Ocean Crest College. The Crest is Cronin. Well, I happen to agree with Mr. Cronin. No matter how you may glamorize this place, it's still a common saloon. The idea of devoting your rather questionable talents to the encouragement of drinking among college students is deplorable. Hold it. Almost half your students are old enough to vote, marry, join the armed forces, or demand the service of any drink they choose to order without consulting you, me, Ocean Crest, or Cronin. They're called men, doctor, and you spell that M-E-N. I'm not talking about the M-E-N. I'm talking about the B-O-Y-S's. Susceptible, impressionable adolescents to whom the serving of alcoholic beverages is nothing short of criminal. Would you come with me, please? What are you doing? Read that. No booze for yous? Last night, had you been underage, Miss Swenson, there would have been no booze for yous either. Now, what else have you got in your little brown book? Well, uh, what about that dancer? Topaz? Yes, what's going on in that dressing room right now? Even when you're closed, she stays open. Explain that if you can, Mr. Woodbury. Well, I hate to disturb him, but if you insist... Oh, no, thank you. I'd rather not. You just tell me. One picture's worth a thousand words, and it may improve your education. In the following expression, F is the distance in feet, and T is time in seconds. Got that? Mm -hmm. Now, find the velocity V and the acceleration A at the end of three seconds from the start of the motion, T equals three. It's her hobby. She majored in mathematics until she got it down to one figure. I'm sorry. Investigation closed? It should never have been opened. Please accept my apology. Mr. Woodbury, there's one more thing that I just have to know. Sid and Max and little me, we slept on the balcony. Now won't you share a steak with me? I'd love to, Mr. Woodbury. I get along fine, but his family doesn't approve. His family? Why not? You think I'm too nice a girl.
about time Ding reached that conclusion about you, isn't it? I hope he doesn't. Huh? I'm not too nice for Ding. I think the trouble is, he doesn't know how nice he is. Getting in pretty deep, aren't you? Mm -mm, just treading water. I'll make my move when I'm ready. You? See you Tuesday night in my apartment? Off limits. How about the party? Party? Yeah, my 21st birthday. I sent you the first invitation. Never got it. Well, you got it now. You coming? Wouldn't miss it. Well, why not? There'll be lots of fun, lots of people. What did you say? Wouldn't miss it. Oh, crazy. <laughs> Another one of his 21st birthday parties? Oh, brother, what a laugh. Third one this year. Yep, Ding should be 63 a night. Ding proof? He doesn't look it. Looks like Snow White's been all set up for the Big Apple. What time? What channel's it on? Night, Karen. Sandy, wait. Doesn't it seem odd to you that Kelp and I aren't going to this party? No. Well, it should. Because it's not Ding's birthday, Sandy. And you're the only guest. I know it. Charming. Absolutely charming. Clyde, you have the soul of a poet. Oh, my presents. What did I get this time? Same breaks, all in very good condition. Good, good. Do you know your cue? Darling, I can't get over how radishing you are. Ravishing. I said radishing. Okay. Then you come in and you do this just a bit and you blow, right? Right. And phone before you come back. I phone. Sorry, still can't do. Oh, forget it, Clyde. I'll wear the jazz bow. Oh, get, get, get. Ah, 
Miss Palmer. Good evening. Good evening. We know each other? No, you're a total stranger. But all the time I hear Mr. Pruitt talk about your pretty eyes, your pretty hair, your pretty... You're not Miss Pettibone. I'm not Miss Pettibone. See, you're Miss Palmer. Please be comfortable. I call Mr. Pruitt. Thank you. Sandy, honey. Well, happy birthday to me. I seem to be the first one here. Yes, and the last to leave, I hope. Hey, whose 21st birthday is this? Yours, darling. That was one of your presents. The other's on the table. Well, let's stick with the first one. I just started unwrapping. Aren't you going to offer me a drink? Uh, a drink? Oh, of course. Of course. What's your pleasure? Champagne. Oh, that's for the senior citizens. I don't think that... <laughs> Why not? <laughs> to you, Mr. Pruitt, congratulations on your 63rd birthday. My 63rd? You're three times the man I imagined you'd be. Oh, and you're three times as beautiful as any girl on the campus. Honestly, darling, I can't get over how ravishing you are. Flattery will get you anywhere. <laughs> well, then I'll, I'll say it again. <laughs> I can't get over how ravishing you are. So I'm ravishing. Stop <laughs> shouting. Well, I want the whole world to know how radishing you are. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Pruitt. Good night? What do you mean, good night? I have guests coming. Sister got baby coming. Good night. How do you like that? Twenty people coming over and he pearls. Maybe she'll have the baby before they get here. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Let's drink to that. <laughs> oh. Shouldn't your guests be here by now? Yeah, you're right. I don't understand that they can't all be this late. You sure it was for tonight? Well, sure. I'm sure I know my own birthday, don't I? Mm, Pretty could have made a mistake. Put the wrong date on the invitations. It's impossible. Impossible. I have a few extras in the drawer. I'll show you. Oh, no! That coup Clyde forgot to mail them. Oh, Sandy, I'm sorry. Sandy, gee, honey, I don't know what to say. I know how it looks and what you're probably thinking, but believe me, I had no idea. Sandy, I wouldn't have had this happen to you for the world. I'm glad it did. You are? Mm -hmm. Hey, what are you doing? I wanted this, Dean. <laughs> I was afraid of it, but I wanted it so badly. You and I, being here alone together, it isn't like the others, is it? The others? I love you. With all my heart, I love you. And I know you love me. When two people feel about each other the way we do, it can't be so terrible, can it? Uh-uh. Kiss me, dear. Kiss me and tell me. Come on, you. What are you doing? What's I'm taking matter? you home. That's what I'm doing. But why? Why? Because I'm a rat. A selfish, no good, lying rat. Will you get hip, girl? This party is as phony as I am. I trapped you into this pad for one reason, and it's not what you call love. Now, come on, get out of here while you're still the sweet, wonderful idiot you were when you came in. You do, don't you? You really love me. Yeah, I guess I must. <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, what? What? Oh, Sandy! 
Genevieve! Clyde, what are you doing? You know very well what he's doing. Got any other rotten hobbies? Sandy! Sandy! Hey, Clyde. Please, Mr. Pruitt. I not take pictures for me. Mr. Cronin make me take them. My grandfather? You've been taking those for my grandfather? All the time, since you freshmen. But do you know my last name? No, I don't. It's Lewis. Sue Lewis. But I don't know you. I know you don't, but if you ever do want me, be sure and ask for Sue Lewis. L-E-W-I-S. She's crying. What do you suppose happened? I'm afraid to suppose. Poor Sandy. Well, Dean Pruitt, you either come home early crying or late laughing. Good evening. Good evening. Oh! oh! Young man! Young man! Pruitt. Sandy, Get please. out of here. Leave I just want to explain. I don't want to see you Listen, anymore. Stop! Do you hear me? Stop! 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 Yes, but if you ever do want me, be sure and ask for Sue Lewis. Because there are three Sues here, and one's a real oh, Indian. Well, who am I dialing? Her uncle. Yes, one, her uncle. Oh, her uncle. Yes, of course, her uncle. Where do I reach him? Sir, stop. stop. Oh, sir, stop. My doctor takes rather a dim view of after-dinner drinking. Evidently, too much under Riviera didn't soften your liver up any, huh? <laughs> oh, no, there's a rumor that you're merging with biochemical. If there's going to be a stock split, you should let your old friends in on it. Oh. Well, you gentlemen are so conservative, you'd probably send the tip to good housekeeping for a seal of approval. <laughs> <laughs> Utilities is my choice. I just took on a large block of eastern gas. You ought to take something to get rid of it. Three hearts. Master Brewer, good evening, Marion. Where's my grandfather? In the study, sir. But he has guests. Would you ask him to come out of my Yes, sir. Gardner. Oh, Gardner. Gardner, dear. Darling, what a lovely surprise. Hello, Mother. You're not ill. Oh, no, no, I'm fine. Mother, I'd like you to meet Miss Sandy Palmer. Oh, oh, Miss Palmer, how do you do? Gardner, my boy, how good to see you. And who is this lovely little lady? Oh, I don't think any introduction is necessary. You know her almost as well as I do. I do? Oh, come to think of it, you haven't seen her in this outfit yet, have you? Those pictures should arrive tomorrow. <laughs> well, as long as you were coming up here anyway, why didn't you bring them with you? Dean, you don't mean that your grandfather... Has... That's exactly what he means, my dear, his grandfather. Candid camera Cronin. He's had me watch, followed, and photographed ever since I'd been in college. Yes, <laughs> and I had to buy half of the place to keep you there. <laughs> Miss Palmer, I'm delighted that Gardner brought you up here tonight. Perhaps you and I can do a little business together. You are in business, aren't you? What's that supposed to mean? He's looking for a price tag. Don't waste your time. She doesn't wear one. Mother? Yes, dear? May I? Yep. Excuse me. Have you read tomorrow's papers? We're engaged. Take a picture of that, Grandpa. Engaged? Oh, bless your hearts, and with my ring. Ding. You never even... Do I have to go through channels? Maybe after graduation. Five minutes after graduation. Welcome to the Pruitt clan, my dear. You're just what this family needs. A nice new strain of bad blood. What do you mean, bad blood? What do I mean? Daughter of a honky-tonk canary and a cheap comic. Raised by a two-bit clown running a, a low saloon undermining the morals of a bunch of half-big college kids. <laughs> Congratulations, my boy. You certainly picked yourself a true aristocrat. Though nothing personal intended, my dear, of course. Come on, Sandy. Gardner, Sandy, wait. Be patient with your grandfather, dear. What he says is shocking, I know, but he thinks he has a reason. Hitler thought he had one, too. Thanks for the loan of the ring, Mom. Darling. Gardner, your allowance. What do you suggest I do with it? Do I have to tell you, Grandpa? You and your bad blood. Hello. 
Now listen, you guys. We got a job to do. At last, a job. I'll drive a car. I'll be the lookout. Geez, this, gentlemen. Leave us acquaint ourselves with the nomenclature of this enterprise. Brochure us in, B.S. Yeah. All right, you guys. Young man. Hi, Mr. Woodbury. You asked for this. Oh, Uncle Woody, wait, wait a minute. You don't understand. Oh, what happened? Let me at him. Wait a minute, Uncle Woody, look. We're engaged. Engaged? Well, all I was trying to do was congratulate you. You were? Of course. Of course, dear boy. What do you say we all go have breakfast? Oh, Uncle Woody. <laughs> I woke up one morning when the sun was shining bright. I said, thank you, Lord, everything's all right. The forest to my left, the mountains to my right. Oh, my Lord, what a beautiful sight. I'm going to walk all over this land. I'm going to walk all over this land. I'm going to walk from the seas to the burning sands. I'm going to walk all over this land. Oh, well, I don't get nothing from a sitting down. I got to get myself up and keep moving around. There's so many sights and so little time I've got to get going or I'll lose my mind I'm going to walk all over this land I'm going to walk Yeah, 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 I'm going to walk All over this land I'm going to walk Don't you know I'm going to walk All over this land I'm going to walk All over this land I'm going to walk from the seas to the burning sands I'm going to walk all over this land You get your beard out of my ear. Kel, Kel, hey, who am I? Karen, who do you want to be? Votre seul et seulement. Oh, for who? The one and only, your future spouse. The proud mother of all Kelp's wealth. Uh, do you really feel like that? Absolutely. Well, let's go somewhere where we can get away from each other. You don't need to stab. You're over 21. Go in and have fun. You're 21, too. Go on in. <laughs> you join her. Or you're growing a beard. You're 21. Go on in. Firewater sale is almost double tonight. Uh, are you watching the Indians? Like a hawk. Can't understand Lou and Mousy not showing up tonight. Lou, I don't know about it. But when my cousin Mousy goes into one of his fits, he don't know his own name for two days at a time. Well, it was nice of you guys to pinch hit. Our pleasure. Oh, no, no, you join the crowd. Have fun. <laughs> this way, please. Mr. Armstrong? Uh, 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 excuse me, Mr. Norman Armstrong? Uh, uh, I'll face him for you right away. Mr. Armstrong? Mr. Armstrong? He couldn't be. Couldn't be who, Ding? Norman Armstrong, president of Allied Chemicals? Don't be silly. No sillier than Colonel Leslie Jenkins tending bar. Woody, there's something weird about the club tonight. I feel it in my fiddle tips. Look at this action. You're just not used to hitting the jackpot. Soon I'll be leaving on a faithful cruise Before I go, sister, hand me down my walking shoes I'll get me lots of rain and lots of bright sunshine Before I lay me down at the end of the line I'm gonna walk all over this land I'm gonna walk, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm gonna walk all over this land I'm gonna walk, well, don't you know I'm gonna walk all over this land I'm gonna walk all over this land I'm gonna walk from the seas to the burning sands I'm gonna walk all over of this land. What are you doing? Playing a 
Thomas Martin. Mm -hmm. Stop the scene! Screen. I think we'll check these young sardines. Come on, young man, stick out those hooks. They must be older than they look. <laughs> it's Woody Wing time. It's Woody Wing time. It's Woody Wing time. It's Woody Wing time. It's Woody. Hold it! Grandpa Cronin lost a bet. Here's Romeo and Juliet. That's right, students. Ding and my niece Sandy are going over the falls right after graduation. Niagara, that is. <laughs> or would you rather go to Fort Lauderdale? <laughs> it's Woody Wing time. 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 Hey, Gus. A couple of rats just went down the anchor chain. I get a feeling we're taking on water. Jackpot! Jackpot! You hit the jackpot! Joke, you hit the jackpot! It's Woody raiding time, 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 it's Woody raiding Give me that drink, kid. I want to turn it in for evidence. Boss, I'm one of you. Smitty, remember? Oh, why don't you grow a beard, Smitty? Now you're drinking all the evidence. Why don't you mind your own business, I believe? Now, what are you doing with these slot machines? What slot machine? All right, wise guy, let's go. Come on, everybody, out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's go. All right, keep her moving up there. I'm sorry, kids. What can I do? Come on, just keep moving. No idea what's going to happen. Thanks a lot, Matter Harry. Oh, no, my name is still Pauline. My report got me fired two days ago. Well, you'll have to come along, too, Mr. Woodbury. In a minute. Let's make this a good one. Might have to last me 30 days. Is Mr. Cronin behind you in demanding the removal of the club? Directly behind me. Thank you, Dean. Woody's fate will be decided tomorrow at a hearing in Judge Phelan's chambers. And in the opinion of this reporter, it seems like the game's up for Surf's Up. That's the news as it well, happened today. At last we got our own TV show. How were the reviews? Lousy. This beautiful sports coupe with its famous wide track, smart, clean lines, suggesting a larger, lower, wider look. Sandy, Uncle come Woody. in. Hello, Uncle Sid. Hi, Sid. Anything wrong? Uncle Woody, Mr. Cronin phoned me today. He said I could get the charges dropped. If you transfer to another college and give up Ding, right? I'm going to do it. I can't let you lose everything you've been working for on account of me. Just a minute, baby. There's someone else to think of. Don't you love Ding? And he loves you. The only way Cronin can hurt Sid and me is by hurting you. The only way you can help any of us is to just go through with what you've started. Now you go on home, phone that hot dog of yours, and blow my kids goodnight. But they're liable to put you both in jail. Sid would love it. Anything but going back to that bull fiddle. 
climb into this racy beauty, step on the gas, and look out. Yesterday's newsreel, the living past, captured by the camera for all posterity. The Kentucky Derby, 1931. A surprise winner coming up on the inside and winning, Precious Pete. Two Stop years later... will you, Sid? Use the air plug. One of the underworld's most colorful characters was released from prison. B.S. Cronin, tabbed by the mob as Nifty Cronin. What he? Paroled after a five-year hey, for good look. behavior. Hey, hey, get up! Look at this! Is given $10 well, look and now, Gloria store. Swanson and the bathing beauties. <laughs> that ain't Gloria Swanson, <laughs> that's Cronin! Prison life seems to have agreed with Nifty Cronin. Evidently the Hey, that is Cronin. B.S. Cronin, alias Burford Sanford Cronin, alias Nifty Cronin, was typical of the Prohibition era. With the true arrogance of a successful mobster, somehow one gets the feeling that the two policemen are his chauffeur and footman. Shortly oh, after his release... Foxy Grandpa, who's who and who's who? And now the year 1934. Zoom, 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 Extra, read all about it. Turn my feet up, pillar of society. From Sing Sing to Santa Barbara in one leap. No more B.S. Cronin, Woody. It's sweet nifty now. Well, don't sit there. Pick up the phone and make with the blackmail. Forget it. That's right. He calls off this rap, or we tannies high Clyde and hang him in the shed, Fred. What? what? Forget it. Listen, Sid, we're not going to assassinate a reputation it took him 30 years to build up. And we're not going to brand those kids. What about us? My fiddle tips. What about Gardner Pruitt the fourth? Good night, Sid. See you in court. In court, Woody? How can you go to sleep in the middle of World War III? It's easy. I took three sleeping pills. Just when they were beginning to heal. your chance two hours ago. Get him up. I gotta see him, I tell you. Get out of my way. Please. Ronan! Mr. Ronan, come down here. Be disturbed. Ronan! Marian. Who is this person? What does he want? The name is Hoyt, Mr. Cronin. Woody Woodbury's manager. Oh, so that's it. Marion, throw the bum out. Yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Cronin, hear me out. We're not guilty of any of the things we were charged with. We were framed by some cheap, dirty, over-the-hill gangsters. Oh, how does this concern me? Well, your grandson's gonna marry Woody's niece. With all the scandal, the club being closed, her uncle going to jail. Well, I thought maybe you might just call off that hearing tomorrow. Why should I do that? Because you're a fine man. A man of unimpeachable character. Admired. Respected. And I think it would be a real nifty thing for you to do. Uh, nifty? Nifty. Nifty. Today's newsreel. A regular untouchable. Yeah. 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 yeah! I knew it. I knew it. Didn't I tell you that other people would see that bad blood on television tonight? Nifty. Yeah, what about Woody's club? Yeah. 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 I'd like a few words with you, Mr. B.S. Cronin. Why so formal? Call me Nifty. Uh, do you wish me to call the police, Nifty? Do you want a slap in the mouth? 
All right, now quiet, all of you. I want to say something. Now you listen to me. Well, listen when you open the club. Yeah! yeah. All right. So 30 years ago, I made a little mistake. In 1492, Columbus made a little mistake. And as a result, he discovered America. That's the kind of a country this is. A country where a mug like me could rise above his mistakes, grab a pipe, slap a bandage on his head, and march right along with the best of them. Only in America. You still have to explain. Explain? Explain what? 30 years of exemplary living, 30 years of devotion to the well-being and improvement of the community I helped to create. All right, so I'm Nifty Cronin. It's a pretty nifty wing I built on the orthopedic hospital, isn't it? And a pretty nifty collection I donated to the art center, isn't it? It's a pretty nifty college we've got. A pretty nifty bunch of kids that got through on my scholarships, isn't that right? Say, why are you always yapping about all the bad blood in this family? Me? Mr. Cronin, we didn't come here to discuss your philanthropies. Tell us about Surf's Up and how you framed Woody. Yeah. 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 What about All that raid on Woodbury's club just sickened me. And it hurts me deeply that you imagine that I had anything to do with it. And I'm amazed that Dean Watkins permitted the college to become involved in it. Me? Now, don't deny it. I'm sure you meant well, but it was a stupid thing to do. You told me to. Get hold of Judge Phelan and call off that hearing. Nice work, Dean. I'm happy to announce that the club will be open as usual for business tomorrow night. Search some. Hold daddy. Hold daddy. Hold daddy. Hold daddy. Do you still object to those children being married? I Would consent until I put her to the test to prove what a fine, spirited girl she is. I know, class, when I see it. Hold daddy. Hold daddy. Hold daddy. Hold daddy. You made a wise choice, my boy. You too, Gramps. Come here, Sandra. Oh, daddy. Oh, daddy. Oh, daddy. 30 years ago, B.S. found himself in quite a mess. But now he's come out of the fog, and that makes him a real hot dog. Mr. Cronin, you're a good loser. <laughs> and a hell of a liar. <laughs> Everything is going goody for Ding and Sandy, Sid and Woody, Pauline and Karen, etc. too, etc. stands for me and you. Oh, daddy, 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 oh, dadd